Hey, what is up, you guys? Welcome back to another Jump to Zuka episode. This time, we're taking a look at three more viewer-submitted manga. So our last one we did, we got so many people asking. We had enough to immediately hit it again, and we probably have enough to do it again after that as well. So just if amazing. you haven't commented already, leave a comment down below if you want us to read your manga, because normally we just kind of pick at random, so this kind of cuts the middleman out. We could just kind of read what people are wanting us to read. Mm -hmm. So just so everybody's aware, we'll be doing another one of these next week, so be sure to leave a like and subscribe so you get your notifications on that. And then we will be taking the week after that off, because that's regular mangaka and mangaku, not mangaka. And we'll be doing uh, My Hero Academia Vigilantes and talking about if that is as good as regular My Hero Academia. So check that out. So in case you guys don't know, Jump to Zuka is a special contest. Usually it's Japan only, but it's a special anniversary and it's open worldwide. 100th anniversary and you could get your manga judged by some of the greats of all time, really. Author of Dragon Ball Z, author of One Piece, Blue Exorcist, My Hero Academia, Slam Dunk, and the folks at Tezuka Productions. So I think it's open to four different languages. I don't know what those are off the top of my head, but it's open worldwide. So submit your manga, give it a shot. Even if you don't think you have it, why not? Unfortunately for you, though, the contest ends September 3rd. So if you haven't started now, good fucking luck. So this week, we're going to be doing Keith and Jeremy's Mystical Mysteries, uh, colon, Scion. Then we're going to be doing a manga literally called The First Chapter by L-L-O-R-D-D-D. -D -D. And then Sandal Samurai by Dev Singh. And then I did not mention, but Keith, Keith and Jeremy's Mystical Mystery is going to be first. And that is by, the story is by Snowy. And the art is by Elisa RG. So with that, let me go ahead and tell you guys about Keith and Jeremy's Mystical Mysteries. Of course, it is a mystery. So I'm going to go a little long because you need to know what happens because it's a fucking mystery. Mm-hmm. So we get a nice little opening poem as we see like a shirtless man running through the town. Of course, Pebbles. So we get an opening little poem and we <laughs> see a shirtless man with a mask running through the town. And I he will here read you this yet. poem because it is relevant. So my lords and ladies of the keep, my road through time was dark and steep. I'm tired now, but still I see my road lit in the sky for me. Your wiles and whims I served and when my service done, you wished me well. But wishes will not keep me warm or fed or loved or safe from harm. So my lords and ladies of the lake, what you won't give me, I will take. And that's the end of it. And then we see a mask guy summon a bunch of vines and we get the title of the manga. And here we are. So we are immediately introduced to Keith and Jeremy as they are being asked to investigate a stolen artifact artifact from some like tuxedo mask looking guy. Yeah, I thought it was a butler at first. Yeah, I yeah, did too that as was well. My, that was my first like he thought was a immediately. Part of the crew. Yeah, but then it's like, no, he's the guy asking him for, to go on the mission. And he basically, he gathers magical items from many different time periods, such as a haunted gumball machine. And his special mask has been stolen and left with a rhyme in its place, which is the rhyme we just heard. So after some begging from Jeremy, Keith begrudgingly accepts the mystery. Yay. And they get paid a 24 karat gold coin, which fucking cha-ching. Holy shit. Yeah. Keith points out that magic sucks as a rule. He doesn't like it because ghosts only fingerprints, can't take a mugshot of a vampire, werewolves just make him sneeze. These which are great. Yeah, makes sense. Valid yeah. fucking points all around. If you're yeah. solving mysteries, it's kind of key. So Keith and Jeremy kind of walk around town. They run into some vines almost immediately, and they just decide to trace back to the source after it seals their magnifying glass. So that's where they immediately run into said masked man who's just chilling in the middle of all the vines. And we get some really good banter here. Um... Mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of skim over it, but if you want to read it, check out the actual manga. There's a lot of good banter and kind of Easter eggs in this manga. But it leads to Keith immediately calling the mask guy a dumbass and telling him to come down here, basically. <laughs> and so this is where we see the kind of disconnect between Keith and Jeremy. Jeremy is much more of a timid, like, oh, maybe we shouldn't do that. You know, and Keith is like, nah, I'll fuck you up. Like, come down here. So Keith gets wrapped in vines almost immediately, and we get an awesome bit from Jeremy where he says this reminds me of one of those creepy Japanese cartoons. Wink, wink. <laughs> And then not even maybe, I think two panels later, we immediately see he's a man of culture as he gets pulled away by the vines. And he screams, I don't want to be in a hentai. My man. So good. So, so good. <laughs> it was just so good. So we find out the man controlling the vines, his name is Scion, which of course is the name of the manga. So that makes sense. And Keith tells him to give the mask back. Scion says he didn't steal it and he left a fair trade for one of his poems. And his poems predict the future so he claims so keith challenges scion to a fair fight like a 1v1 without the mask but good guy scion in this party's like no nah, i don't really need the hassle so have your fucking mask back 
Yeah, it almost felt anticlimactic. Yeah, it was like it was leading up, and then he was, which I kind of like. He was kind of like, yeah, I don't really need. I just wanted to have fun. It's like here, take yeah. your fucking mask if you're gonna be an asshole about it. So yeah. Jeremy gets mad at Keith for kind of being a dickhead to Sion. He's like, yeah, you didn't have to do that. You were kind of. He was kind of baiting him into a fight because he's like a really good fighter. He'll fuck you yeah. up. It leads to Keith eventually apologizing to Sion, and Sion kind of finds that amusing and wants to hang out with him more. So we get a nice little montage of them going to the movies, going to a party where the Monster Mash is playing, and of course trick or treating because, as I didn't mention, it's Halloween night. So of course they just gotta rub it in our face, you know? Yeah, seriously, it ain't gonna be like that this Halloween. So we'll see. Oof. After a night of hanging out, Keith realizes that Sion can do magic without the mask, so he's not sure why he wanted to steal the mask, and that's when he explains, you know. It's like, yeah, the guy took out an advertisement in the newspaper, basically, and just as he's, like, asking for somebody to come steal it. So, yeah, why not? It boosts my magic power. I'm going to go get it. So Keith kind of starts to put it all together in that, that moment. It's like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, why would he? And then he kind of starts to get spooked. And he immediately tells Jeremy to go home, tell Sina to take the mask and run as far away as possible. And that's when we see a giant fucking leprechaun show up out of nowhere and grab Keith and slam him to the ground. Which is just like, okay, we're going that way. We're taking a left turn here. Yep. Scion dons the mask and eventually saves Keith because, you know, they're best buds now. And that's when you find out, in case you guys didn't know. makes you homies. Yes, it does. Leprechauns get bigger if you piss them off. So don't piss off leprechauns. Yep. And that is when the question is asked, do you have any gold on you? And you kind of start to put together the pieces here. At that moment, Keith goes back to, to the tuxedo mask looking guy and flicks the coin and basically tell him, listen, deal's off. We're done. And the problem now is, tuxedo mask guy explains, is he has technically accepted the coin as payments. So that is his. And that coin is what the leprechaun wants because that is part of his treasure. And so now you're fucked. Sorry. Yeah. Keith's not happy about that. And he tells Keith, listen, I'll take the coin back if you bring me Scion. And, you know, that's not going to happen. So, uh, bam. He gets punched in the face. Tuxedo Mask gets punched in the face by Keith. And that's where we find out that Tuxedo Mask, who you could also say looks like a vampire, is a vampire. Whoa. Yeah. Never who saw it coming. Thought? And the ad in the paper was all a trap to get magic users to come here because their blood tastes really good. And he was in the picture in the magazine, but you can't take a picture of a vampire. So it wasn't in the fucking newspaper. And I just noticed it. So the reason, I, I don't know if you noticed, the reason uh, he found out, oh, he's a vampire and concluded all that, the wine glass is floating in the picture. Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't even realize okay. that. Because he's like, oh, you, you know, you can't take a photo, but you were in the photo. I was like, what? Oh, when we're reading okay. this now, I was like, oh, there's no way. And now I'm like, I, yeah, I totally get that now. It's floating. Yeah, I just so thought he put go. it together. I didn't see the wine glass. So there's, there's yeah. a lot of cool little Easter eggs in the manga related to other series for sure. So Keith and the vampire guy kind of fight. They have a little showdown and then immediately hear Jeremy and Sion showing up being chased by the leprechaun. And they just kind of ruin everything at that point because they're bringing the leprechaun. They're Sion's yep. showing up. It's all fucked. So they come in. Vampire locks the door behind them. Hands come up through the ground, which I assume is the go uh, not the goblin, the leprechaun's hands. I wasn't 100% on that, but basically makes the ground fall underneath Keith and he yeah. gets pushed under. He magically ties up Jeremy with like a piece of rope. And then chains Sion to the door with, like, some magic chains. He then goes to suck Sion's blood out. But he's wearing, like, a big fucking goth neck collar. So he's like, oh, I'm going to need something to cut this off. So that's when we hear, will this do? And he gets stabbed by a sword right through the chest. And it's Keith. Yep. Keith is looking fucked up at this point. Keith got fucked on. Uh, vampire falls to the floor. And without missing a fucking beat, Keith double taps him and cuts off his head. Just, like, yep. almost instantly. It was like, fucking, you go, Keith. That leaves Jeremy, like, fucking stunned. He's like, why'd you do that? He's like, oh, he's a vampire. Oh, if okay. he had cut his fucking hands off immediately after that, I would have been like, this is amazing. This guy <laughs> no, is like, no, no. He just double taps. I was like, okay. But Sion, being the smart guy that he is, is like, yo, he's not dead because I'm still fucking chained to the door. So that's when we see the leprechaun crawl up through the hole that was created in the floor. That is, and he's now carrying the vampire's head. So they're kind of like an amalgamation, kind of double team set up. And so Keith turns to Jeremy, hand on his shoulder. You got this. Very Goku Gohan moment. Like, hey, listen to all mm -hmm, you do. Like, yeah. you know, I did my part. Good luck. Keith gets sucker punched by the headless body of the vampire that can still move. You know, get fucked on. Bot the headless body then picks up the sword that Keith had previously stabbed the vampire with. And it's just about to stab Keith back. But then we hear it fits. 
which you might be wondering what fits is he part of a hentai again did jeremy do something (laughs) that's not the case because we see jeremy over the gumball machine helping himself to like a couple of gumballs you're like okay sure i don't understand what's happening so jeremy explains that he just made a deal with a gumball machine and the vampire's pissed and he's like hey don't touch my fucking stuff you lousy brat and that's when you realize oh fuck okay so he basically used the gold coin on the gumball machine and because he doesn't own the gumball machine the vampire owns the gumball machine it's the gold coin is back to being the vampires yep so get get at get wrecked sorry yep at that part without even missing a beat as well the leprechaun presumes to eat the vampire's head just like yep good enough for me chomp 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 and then he shrinks back down and leaves and so scion my boy immediately starts fawning over all the cool shit that's up for grabs like oh yeah he's got the sword he's got the suit it's like this is great and jeremy's like yo i gotta get keith to the hospital it's like you take whatever you want so they leave and we get one last rhyme here which i will now read for you my lords and ladies of the night your gifts are cold but shine so bright they call my blood to rise and sing of glory strength to be a king so what choice to make which bridge to burn your song is false your gifts i spurn what you won't give me, I will earn. And then we see a nice picture of Sion and Jeremy now both helping the lads. Keith to the hospital because they're buds now. And that's how it ends. And they kind of like, they banter back and forth. It was pretty good. The banter was really good in this manga. I really mm-hmm. liked yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know. It was like, maybe like an Archie's thing. Like, I think Archie's had a weird, yeah. like, uh, like little comic series for a bit. Uh, but it was just fun. I liked it all, all the way through. Yeah, I thought it yeah. was like, it's weird because like I would almost describe it as good, wholesome fun, fun but someone does get their head chopped off in here. So, but it's like, yeah, it was just like fun. Yeah, it was just like, yeah. they're doing a mystery. They're solving it. You think they found this one guy and it's like, oh, we solved it. He stole the fucking thing. And then like, nope, that's not the case because, you know, the guy's actually a vampire. There's a fucking leprechaun. It, yep. it was really cool and it was really fun. The art was good. The story yes, flowed really good. nicely. Like I said, there was a lot of little like hints to other stuff in there like on the newspaper titles and stuff it, it was it was really good i mean even in the um the cover it had detective conan in the background yeah 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 it was really good i i'm saying i like i had a great time reading all the way through and i i would be interested to see how you would carry the se- series on i guess you just keep doing different mysteries yeah. and like you're kind of like for or help just, mm-hmm. it started like probably like as a you're just a hire for help and then you stumble onto something a little bit thicker yeah, I yeah. liked I like that both Keith and Jeremy were very different, and so was Sion. They did they yeah. were all very different from each other. Like they didn't overlap very much. They had good chemistry. Like the parts of them hanging out was a lot of fun. So now I'm curious if they're going to keep Sion in the group and continue as a three man group, or if he's just going to move on to his way. Like we don't know where he came from, why he's here, kind of all that stuff. I would imagine what they do is, I if I was doing it, I would keep it as just Keith and Jeremy but he would be like a rotating character that keeps coming back yeah. in. Like every once in a while they have Scion tag along. Like, oh, it's like where you got to go into a swamp. Hey, let's get Scion. He's a fucking yeah. plant guy. Yeah, he's just chilling. Because it is called Keith and Jeremy's Mystical Mysteries, not the other way around, you know? True. But I did like Scion, and I would love to see him more. Yeah, definitely. So, shit, I mean, that kind of is it for me. I, I genuinely enjoyed it. That's pretty much all I have to say about that. Do you guys have anything else to say about it? No. I, huh? I, I, I feel the of- same. Okay, so that was uh, Keith and Jeremy's Mystical Mysteries, Scion, by Story by Snowy, Art by Elisa RG. And we're going to move on. Uh, Jose, you're going to be next with Sandal Samurai by Dev Singh. So go ahead. Sweet. So jumping straight in, you're in a, a like a peaceful, prosperous town. It's super, uh, I think it's super advanced at the same time. It's just peaceful, cool little like scenic scenes. Um, and then immediately just explosion in the middle of this. Uh, to find out that there's um, a dude in a straw hat just overlooking and he sees smoke uh, and you just see this giant grotesque looking monster which I was, I was like wow damn get straight that to thing, the point that thing's ugly it as was, fuck yeah, I seriously yeah. was like yeah. holy shit that is like a really nasty like if you saw that you'd be freaked out like that shit's yeah. fucked yeah and it's like it's got like six arms and two giant legs and it's got like this chubby little body in the middle kind of thing It's it was weird yeah it is mega fucked looking. Like, it, yeah, I agree. Like what Sam said, it was genuinely just fucking terrifying looking. At you know it. what it kind of reminds me of? The the boomers from Left 4 Dead. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. yeah. If you could just kind of fuse two of them together. Yeah. Yeah, the the, the big lanky one. Yeah. But yeah, it, immediately then uh, it starts kind of like talking to itself, looking for another host, I think is what it says. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's able to spot one, which is like a terrified little kid uh, to that. And then it cuts to... A dude poking his nose, just chilling out in the forest, you know. But he clearly senses something, and uh, 
Then it cuts back to the big monster overlooking this kid. There's a little girl right next to him. He just disappears instantly. And I guess he's technically inside the kid's body at this point. Oh. I think that's what he does, right? Like, I, I couldn't tell. Like, the kid was basically saying, hey, you fucked us both. You should have yeah. ran kind of thing. I did yeah. like that part. That was kind yeah. of dark. It's like the little girl like came to help, and he was like, no. It was like, you, you fucked us both. He's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I didn't get the he turned into him kind of thing. Well, because, like, he gets uh, encapsulated in, like, a cocoon as this happens. Um, meanwhile, you just see a samurai, like, unsheathing his sword. Like, the cool little, like, you can't tell, but I'm, like, he's doing the little flick and unsheathing it. Yeah. Yeah, like, he, like, takes off at full speed, and then he's, like, right next to this kitty cat. He's like, oh, look at the kitty kitty. Uh, but anyways, back to the thing. He goes up to the ca- cocoon, and he just tries to, like, break it. Uh, his sword smashes, and he's like, fuck, you're going to pay for this gets all upset and uh then the big monster emerges and it's like uh, it's now in the kid's body i think but it's so like I a think, new host I think it absorbed the bodies oh like, it absorbed him yeah okay. yeah he didn't because he talks about how he found like two really strong bodies to like kind of absorb yeah, yeah one he was talks smart about, and one had willpower yes. yeah uh so it goes to that and then the samurai is like all right i'm gonna fight this guy next uh throws a kick i think he dodges uh doesn't really phase him Goes for super cool uh, Dragon Ball Z jabs. Uh, and then he's like, all right, here comes my super powerful one. He, and they both clash fist and his hand breaks, the samurais. It's more like his elbow. Yeah, actually, like his, funny his humorous funny bone kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Big rip. He's yeah, probably then... crying of laughter. We'll cut that part. You don't have to react to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, he gets smashed away onto the top of the building to which he does the cool thing where he rips his shirt off. I'm like, ah, he's going to fuck him up right now. And, uh, he kicks his sandal up and Mm -hmm. as it's coming down, he just kicks it right back and just smashes the monster. Full explosion. Like full explosion. And, uh, it cuts back to the straw hat dude is like, oh, sandal smash. He's like, I didn't think I taught you that. He's like, not bad. But then when he's like, oh, it's time to get some food. The cat comes back and it's kind of a... I, I don't know, the cat gives me like a sinister look at first, but then it's like, oh, it's a cute little kitty. Uh, only to realize that you were watching a movie this whole time by some dude on the couch. Yeah, it, it kind of threw me for a fucking loop there. Yeah, I, I didn't know what it was going to do there, but it it literally just does that. And he's like, oh, I got this cool figure because this is supposed to be super cool and stuff like that. And that, that was pretty much it. That's like a whole plot twist, man. Yeah, it's just a crazy plot twist. I thought the whole time the, the samurai was like its own little thing. Yeah, I, I didn't get what happened. So they, they they went out of the world and he has a whole movie dedicated to like, or they have a figurine dedicated to a movie. Mm-hmm. And then you go back and it's like, I'm pretty sure they're talking about the cat because they were saying, oh, adopt me, adopt me. And he's like, yep. oh, he's been adopted. And then they reveal like, oh, we're going to make this into the concrete world. And I can't tell if that's so part of the movie you're... or if it's yeah, actually real. Yeah, I was real. like, is it like the ring where it comes out of the TV? Or is it like a the TV show is just video, like filming a real place that's in a different world or something. Like it's just broadcasting from a different world. And like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I was super confused also. So I honestly have no input there. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, so I was on board the whole time. I thought the action scenes were really fucking good mm-hmm. all the way through. Like I could clearly tell what was happening. The Sandal Smash thing was fucking fantastic. I liked that a lot. Um, but yeah, that right turn at the end, I, I don't know where we were going with that. I was so yeah, confused. Yeah, uh, that, that part was the where I was just like, huh. Because I like the Sandal Samurai. I like him. Yeah, he's funny as hell. I, I liked all the concepts and bits, but there was like some parts that caused confusion for me throughout the whole thing. And especially when they did the two plot twists, one right after another, it was like, wait, what the fuck is happening? Like that that was where it threw me what off. What are the two plot twists? Well the that it was a movie and that maybe it's possibly not a movie. Uh, I, okay, know, yeah, that, I that was you. that was weird to me. Uh and then the whole scene with the uh the kid being like, You fucked us like as Sam said, super dark, really cool. I didn't get, I didn't understand but what kind of happened at that moment. It matches it the confusing. tone of it, though. It's like, yeah, yeah, which is so weird. They have like this super dark, dark fucking situation, and then the the main guy comes up out of nowhere and is like totally cutesy and ooh, like the first half. Ooh, ooh. I like the art and everything. Yeah, there there's some stills, like especially with the the monster and some like the the yeah the monster and stuff design like. is crazy. Yeah, it looked really good. 
Yeah, Monster Design was good. Uh, the cityscape was really good. They fucking destroyed a city at one point. Um, yeah, the he fighting does, was... like I think he does like a substitution jutsu at one point. Like it was, it was really good. And I like the I like the character of the Sandal Samurai. I like the monster. I like the fight scene. I don't like how it ended. Yeah, yeah, just the ending was a little too confusing for me. And I, I'm sure that's kind of like a like a ooh, it's like what's happening here is like don't you mm-hmm. want to know? But it's like I don't even know what I want to know. Yeah, yeah. It could have ended without that, and we could have still wanted to know more, kind of thing like that. Because yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, could have totally definitely. had another story. The part that because tripped me up is the movie part. Like if they yeah. if they were to have cut out the movie part, and then go straight to the guy in the shadows being like, "Oh, the subject's taken home, whatever, whatever." Then it'd be like, "Oh, there's some that was all set up, a secret thing." Yeah. Then it's like we have the movie bit in between where it's like, "Are they maybe talking about the fat guy watching the TV?" I don't know. Cool. So, uh, did you guys have any last thing to say about it? I think pretty much covered it. it was, it's very action heavy. So, it's not that yeah. like we don't have a lot to say about it, but go check it out yourself. It's very, very action heavy and it's good. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, let's move on to the last one we're going to do. It is called The First Chapter and it's by L L O R D D D Little Lord. So, go ahead, Josh. So, basically, we start off. First of all, I thought. Uh, Sam told me I had to pick this one. Um, mm-hmm. I thought I was getting dunked on because the intro uh, cover is horrifying looking. And I thought, oh, this is going to be a horror novel. And I'll give you the summary now. So basically, it's a young manga enthusiast. Uh, you can go into the actual uh, s- summary of what the author submitted. And his name is Akuji. I don't know if they ever really tell you that in the manga. Um, and he's basically just discontent with the stereotypical tropes of manga is, you know, having happy endings and especially like, and weirdly enough, he really does not like anything with the etchy manga stuff. Like it's too cutesy. He, he, it's not that he doesn't think it's not okay. It's not that he doesn't like it. It's just that it's too overdone, et cetera. And so he basically just has like a monologue to himself and is complaining about the whole situation. He's kind of got this like edgy guy emo vibe to him and he blacks out and he eventually finds himself in what he pretty quickly con- concludes is to be a, a lucid dream which he describes and everything here's why sam told me to pick this and he finds that he's actually lucid dreaming one of the manga that he despises and he finds a small black book next to him which appears to actually be the manga that um he's in with a bunch of character bios and everything and he finds that he's actually in it uh, so he sees a really cliche fight scene. Basically, the the main character of the story is like, "You can't beat me because it's predetermined that you'll lose because good never or good never loses." Pretty much. Uh, to which she immediately dunks on the guy, full explosion on him and everything. And he's like, "Oh, that was super cliche." And he's like, "I don't like her." So he takes a pencil and just draws a line through her eyes. And that was, you know, really the end of him being discontent. He wasn't angry or anything. All of a fucking sudden, we go from like zero, maybe 10 miles per hour, depending on where you're at, maybe in the neighborhood, to fucking 100 miles an hour. Sure, her head falls off. Like right at the line, it just slops right off. And you're like, oh, oh, they did that. Okay. And he immediately says, oh shit, I did that. I gotta run, like a normal murderer does. So he runs away. And he's like, oh shit. And instead of saying, okay, I'm out, I need to drop this off, he's like, hey, I'm not a sociopath, but you know what? Let's be a sociopath for the next, you know, remainder of this manga. And instead of saying, oh, shit, I could do all the cool things I want, he is so upset with these happy endings that he remembers there's a specific part in the manga. So he goes to a scene where a senpai is confessing his love to a girl who they just got in a recent fight, and he cuts the dude in half in front of her while she's holding him. And then he proceeds to maim and destroy her body and redraw it. And she makes fun of her the entire time, calling her a ninja turtle hand or something like that. Just shits on this person and then turns her into a weird contraption of a rolling ball on like a gyroscope with a fucked up head and lets her roll off. He got mad that he couldn't pick up the sword he was intending to brutalize her with. So he's like, oh look, I can see that I don't have any info on my character sheet in this manga. I'm going to write something in there. He writes in uh, super strength, but I also keep my hair, which is just a weird thing to do. 
I don't know <laughs> if he's like, oh, I'm going to turn into Saitama all of a sudden. I'm it all... was a One Punch Man reference. Yeah. It was? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Then, uh, so I clearly didn't pick up fully on that. So he gets super strength, and he immediately starts hopping around. Right after the second hop what, is what I think it is, his leg blows the fuck off because he didn't tell his in his bio that his body was strong enough to handle this. So he starts falling down. He's pretty much... He uh, basically is like having this inner monologue where it's definitely got to Death Note levels of kind of crazy inside of his mind where he's like, oh, I'll just come back to this. That was my first experiment. And we cut to a scene where his head is crushed by the ground. And before we find out really what happened, we go to black. So it kind of alludes to he's probably dead and that wasn't a dream. It was just some weird fucked up world. Um, or he may have been dreaming. We don't really know. So it kind of ends on that cliffhanger. Wah! Yeah. That, Inception. That, that noise that you just did could have played the entire time I read this. <laughs> so It was dark. It was really yeah, dark. This dark. is a dark one. So it was really fucked up. And I so I thought, okay, the premise is really cool. It, I basically have it written here saying, Similar concept and psychotic vibe to like Death Note, but with like a more emo main character. So you're not like this super intelligent guy. It's more, I just hate the world, but I'm not a bad guy because it's just a fake world inside my head. So I'm just going to fuck with everything, you know, normal. Which as people you know, do in dreams all the time, you know, it's like yeah. sometimes but you're it, fucked up. It had this serial killer vibe to me. It's like, oh, I killed a mouse. I would never be a serial killer. And then he just proceeds to be a murderer for the rest of his life. But and part it just... of it is like he recognizes he's in a lucid dream. It, so yeah. He's like, so he starts oh, doing I would all never this stuff. do this IRL. But because but we're it... in a lucid dream, I could do whatever I want. But that just sounded like to me when I read that it was ba- and I put it in here. It's basically like, hey, I'm not a sociopath, but I'm just going to go commit sociopath. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and do all of this. First thing anybody If God drops you a fucking better version of the Death Note in your lucid powers, dream, you, you do whatever the, the fuck you chick. want. You bang the hottest chick you know, you got superpowers, you can fucking fly. I don't turn people into weird ass toys with a cyclops eye and call fucking names. Okay, well on the me. first one was an accident, and then the yeah, second the one. The first one was yep. an accident, he, and then he does it again. He just <laughs> needed to see if it worked again. Okay. Oh, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was literally uh Death Note with like a uh, scribble knots power. Yeah, and it, it's like this way more expansive world, and you're like, oh, cool. By the end of it, you're like, oh, good God, this guy had a fucking weapon of mass destruction. Like, you're not sure if it was real or not. You know, interesting, um, though, someone else would have found the notebook. He's in the notebook, so he could have been fucked. Yeah, so true. When his leg flew off, I thought there was another mangaka or manga, or manga user, and I was like, oh, shit. This is cool. This isn't like a fucking lucid dream. It's a battle royale, but they get to draw would've their way sick, through it. would have been sick, actually. That would have been really sick. And then he died. And I was like, oh, that would have been cool. But I feel like that would have been too cliche, I guess, or something like that. It would have been too big. He would not have liked that. He doesn't want that. Come on. That's the whole point. Everything is samesies. Fuck that. Yeah. Maybe he really likes Sai from fucking Naruto. Yeah. No. Sai is too happy for me. Sai is robotic. Okay. We we agree with that. This guy is down here in depravity. So he really does like Sai because he turned the girl into robots. I think this is all coming together. Can you cut. Yeah. I don't want to agree with you. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you got this vibe, but I can't tell if I, I saw the artist's other work, really good stuff, but it is darker looking. It's like got a darker vibe, not necessarily like darker Earthing. content. Yeah, and I can't tell if the mangaka is an edgy teen or if they've been able to frame the inner dialogue and like general outlook on life of an edgy teen because there was times when i was reading it's like god kid shut up like why are you so upset with the world like it's just some no like, i liked it sim- I you liked did it. yeah i like it made sense it, totally it wasn't like i was vibe. like oh i hate this what i'm reading it's more like this kid is kind of annoying it was like, like your guy who's fucking pissed off at the world doesn't yep. have anything going for him it's like it's yeah. everybody else's fault that his thing isn't doing well i fucking hate that everybody is into oh. edgy and harm stuff it's like of the top 140 or not even a single one that's outside of that and then he fucking just goes berserk yeah, and Sam, I'm now realizing, just identifies with him, and that's why he loved this. <laughs> it reminded me, neither of you have seen it, but it reminded me a lot of Gantz, which is just kind of like another dark anime. And I liked that a lot, and I liked this one a lot. I thought it was really interesting. Um, another one, though, where I don't know where you would go, maybe he would just have slightly different dreams, and you would see him just slowly fucking 
go down the toilet of yeah. being a psychopath until That'd it bleeds into real life. Yeah. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. But yeah, I couldn't tell if it was, you know, this is a one shot where he just wanted to, like, the artist just wanted to basically say, here is my concept for a darker manga. And, you know, we're, we leave it up into the air kind of thing. I, like I said, it was overall cool. I didn't. Maybe it's just because I don't like the darkness that this it went could be to. Ta- part of a like Twilight Zone manga thing. Oh, where it's it's a, it's a different one. Series? Yeah, that would be cool, Jose. That's a great that point. Would, mm-hmm. And it's all anti manga tropes and stuff like that. That would be kind of cool. I like that. I so the art was really good. Yeah, I this is what the art just, was much 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 of, like the most unique one that we read this week for sure. Yeah, the only problem is it's very like depressing. It's all like monotone, which, which is probably I mean, by choice. Yeah, and that's what I, I had in here. I couldn't tell if it was just like this is an ambience thing where it just wanted everything to feel like you're about to be murdered on the next page, or if it's just this is my art style. I like to make things darker. Like even the blank spaces on the pages weren't white; it was black. Yeah, so... they made, they kind of gave it that style where it's like it looks like it was just drawn by pencil, like a lot. Yeah, yeah. Which like comes into play when he's like drawn in the notebook and shit. So it's like, oh, okay, okay, I get the and style. There's... There's some cool little bits like in on page four, he, you know, it's got that death note vibe where it's like very intense looking and he's like biting his lip and stuff like that. And he's just adding all these like elements. It was good. It, it was really well done. Um, just fucked in my opinion. <laughs> so, but yeah. Did you guys have any other opinions on it? No, I think that about covers it. So let's go on to everybody's favorite segment where we pick the winner for this week. So as with the competition, there's always got to be a winner. We're going to go through each week, pick our winners, and have a grand battle royale at the end and pick the ultimate winner. So once again, this week we did Keith and Jeremy's Mystical Mysteries, colon, Scion. Story by Snowy, art by Elisa RG. The first chapter is the one we just did by L-L-O-R-D-D-D-D, L-L-O-R-D-D-D, and Sandal Samurai by Dev Singh. So I don't know about you guys, but I found this week really hard to try to figure out which one I liked purely based on the fact that they're very different. They're they're, each one is completely different. Very, very different. Yeah. And it's like I have my categories that I like, but it's like Sandal Samurai is kind of like your action manga. Uh, Keith and Jeremy's Mystical Memories is like a fun mystery kind of – I could almost see it as like a slice of life. They just do different mysteries all the way across. And mm-hmm. the first chapter was dark. is like a dark and like gruesome manga yeah. that was still really good. Yeah. Um, they all had their qualities. So, I mean, shit. Uh, Jose, do you have one that sticks out for you? This one was so hard. But I think I'm going to go with like Keith and Jeremy's because part of me really – it reminded me a little bit of my childhood watching Scooby-Doo and Archie's <laughs> Weird Mysteries and stuff. So yeah, it's just it like, ah. Uh, uh, so, Josh? Yeah. I, I got to give it exactly the same reasoning as Jose. Like, it was just a feel-good vibe the whole time. So in Well, the I, first chapter would fucking hate you. Yeah, so. <laughs> I read. I had to read Keith and Jerry's knees after first chapter, and it was a very welcome, comforting pinch. <laughs> <laughs> the whole first part of the first chapter is like, everybody just wants to feel fucking good. And Josh is yeah, like, that go. one made me feel good, so I'm going to pick <laughs> Keith and Jeremy's. And, you know, they still tried to trigger me with cutting the vampire's head off, and they couldn't break me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what about you? For my pick, man, I seriously... I just for the record, I would take any three of these. Yeah, I think they were I all agree. very good, and I personally really like the first chapter. Um, my two top ones, I do like Keith and, Keith and Jeremy's Mystical Mysteries. I like that one a lot, and then I would have put the first chapter up there also. But our winner this week is definitely Keith and Jeremy's Mystical Mysteries: Golden Science. So congratulations to Snowy and Elisa RG. Fantastic job. Uh, thanks for submitting that to us in the comments and really kudos to everybody else who submitted and we read this week. We have more set up, but be sure to leave a comment if you have your own and you want us to read it. With that being said, guys, I always put a link to every chapter we read in the description down below. So go check them out yourself. Leave a heart. Check them out. Um, there's stuff that we skim over that you're not going to get from us. So read it yourself. If you find one that is interesting, go check it out. Um, once again, to reiterate, we will be back next week with another Jump to Zuka. We will be taking the week after that off to do regular Mangaku, where we're doing My Hero Academia Vigilantes. And then we will be back, which is the week after the competition ends. We'll be back with another Jump Tezuka. So be sure to get your submissions in if you're waiting on that. And uh, congratulations once again. So with that, guys, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. That helps us out. And that way you can come back and get notifications. We'll be here every Friday with a new Jump Tezuka, obviously minus the one I just mentioned. So with that, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.